Fairbanks Focus is a locally produced public affairs program created in part by University of Alaska Fairbanks, KTVF, and Fairbanks Economic Development Corporation. Welcome to Fairbanks Focus Alaska View. I'm your host, Annie Bartholomew, here with Jeff Welch, co-owner of Digital Dateline Printing. Hey, Jeff. Hey, how are you? Good, and yourself? I am very well today. So tell me about your role in Fairbanks. Well, so I, I own Dateline Digital Printing, and uh, I, I own that with my business partner, Travis Lewis. And we have, we've been in ownership for about eight years now. It's actually a, a business that uh, we purchased from his father. Um, and so we have, we've been connected to the business for a long time. And in the past year or two, we've really started to consider what an impact our business can have on the community uh, socially and, and the things that we can do to um, be, to matter to the community, to be an advocate for the community and to help it to be a strong place. And that's where the Banks Fairbanks project comes in? Yeah, that, that's absolutely part of it. So we, uh, we dreamed up this idea a couple years ago that we were going to start giving away free thank you cards. Uh, I'm sorry, a couple years ago. Uh, last year, it's been about a year and a half now. Um, and that has been a pretty remarkable uh, project. So we, we started designing our own cards in the shop. And uh, we have a little sign up form that people can go to thanksfairbanks.com. And you give us a little bit of information and we use it for only good purposes to send you free thank you cards. And uh, so you get three free thank you cards right off the bat and every three months we send out three more. Uh, we have about 600 subscribers right now. Wow. And so next week-ish, we are going to be sending out about 1,800 thank you cards to people in Fairbanks. So you send them out yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we, I mean, we offer full printing services, mailing services, the whole nine yards. So we can do the whole project in-house with the one exception of the fact that this month, uh, Fairbanks artist Jamie Smith is, has submitted art for us to, to use. So we'll be featuring his art this time. Um, but yeah, the whole thing happens in-house. We do it all. In fact, my parents uh, usually come in and they stuff envelopes for us and, and help us to get the whole <laughs> thing prepared. So that it's fun. Uh, but we really, we're, we're hoping to get to the point where we can't do it all ourselves anymore, where we, we need community support. We need people to, to be willing to volunteer and help us stuff thousands and thousands of envelopes because it, it gets too big for us to handle. That's kind of our goal. Wow. Yeah. So how'd you get the idea for this project? Where did that come from? Well, my wife, she was, uh, she was involved in a, uh, a class on gratitude at our church. And it was a, woman, a women's class, so I wasn't allowed to, to go show up. But she would come back and tell me these things about, about what they were learning. And, and I really recognized that I was really terrible at expressing gratitude. Not just saying thank you to be polite, but to really let people know uh, what, what they, how they mattered to me and the things I was thankful for. And I wanted to change that. So in 2000, uh, 2012, I decided that I was going to send out a thank you card at least every business day. And so I sent out about 275 thank wow. you cards myself, just you know, handwritten thank you cards. Um, and along the way, I, I recognized that there may be some value in sharing this. Uh, we were making all the, all the cards in-house, we were doing all the design work, and it allowed us to sort of fl flex our creative muscles uh, a little bit and, and do some original work. And it was really fun, and we decided we wanted to share it. And it was literally a three-minute conversation with Travis that went from this being me sending out thank you cards to uh, let's give these away. And within just... Uh, I would say a week or two, we had the whole broad strokes of, of what Thanks Fairbanks would be. And um, I'm, I'm kind of a, uh, a genius level worrier. <laughs> so I was, I, was either, I was convinced that once we launched it, it was either going to be no one in Fairbanks would sign up or everyone in Fairbanks would sign up on the first day and we would just be crushed by it. Uh, but thankfully, you know, was, uh, we were able to get a, a small start, sort of fail in front of a small group of people in terms of getting the, the process down. And so we've really been pushing the past three or four months to expand that. Uh, we feel like we're at a, at a point where we can, uh, we can manage it better and where we can grow it uh, purposefully. So, yeah. How did the project change you as a business owner and a person? Well, it, it's scary for me because it's out of my control. Um, I, I, I definitely like to control things and uh, this becomes something where you have to sort of let it go. You say, here's what we're gonna start and then let the community take it and run with it. If we send out all these thank you cards and no one sends them to anybody, 
and it was kind of a waste of time. You know, the idea is for, for people to be sharing gratitude and for that to sort of multiply in the community. So for me, I've really had to wrestle with this idea of I can't control the whole thing. And when you, when you again, you open it up for people to sign up, you never know when it's going to get to the point when you can't, uh, where either financially or just practically we can't bear it and we're going to have to have help. And so I, again, a worry, I, I like to worry about those things. Uh, and so it's been good for me to have to deal with some of that and to have to say, you know, you can't control everything and it's, it's okay to, uh, to let people help you. Yeah. Have you ever received fan mail? Yes. for this program yes and that is super fun I, I, we've gotten a handful of cards from like our cards back from people and I'll, often people will say is it okay for us to send you know your <laughs> card back to you and it definitely is definitely is okay um, yeah it's the funnest thing in the world and so um, just a, a few messages we've received have really uh, helped us to be encouraged uh, to keep moving forward and to uh, uh, sometimes you're not sure how people are responding to it because once you send it out, you don't really know what people are doing with the cards. But to, to hear that back, to hear, the, to hear stories of people sharing them, there was one woman who shared that her teenage son uh, was looking for the cards that he had signed up for because he wanted to send a card to his grandma and how that's not exactly teenage son material. That's not exactly what moms expect to hear. And that she was just really touched by that. And it was cool that we got to be a part of that, that we got to be a catalyst for that. So where can people sign up to receive cards? Absolutely. They can e you can either come in to Dateline Digital Printing or go to thanksfairbanks.com. And there's just a, a simple little form there. It's very, very quick and easy. What other services does your business offer? So we offer uh, printing services, and that's anything from, from business cards on the small end to, to giant banners on the large end. Uh, there's uh, uh, direct mail services, so uh, newsletters and... and uh, uh, postcards, that kind of stuff that businesses are sending out. We can handle the whole process from start to finish uh, in terms of getting it in people's mailboxes. Well, the post office does handle that <laughs> part, but uh, we, we handle everything up to the post office part. Uh, a pretty wide range of, of service related to um, people communicating with an audience through print. Do you have any unique clients that people in the community would know? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not... I'm always a little bit unsure about <laughs> how at liberty I should be to, to talk about who our clients are. Um, I don't want to put them on the spot. Um, but yeah, so we, we work with a number of, of large organizations that maybe um, educate people. I mean, those are some organizations we work with. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with uh, a, a number of businesses. And, and the, the, I think the really cool part is that we, we have this, uh, this business, co business component, uh, but they're also uh, the individuals too. So we sort of tread these, these two different areas where we get to deal with big companies and small businesses and also just students and individuals who, who need a handful of smaller projects done. Um, that's really, it's really neat to have that spectrum. You know, we, we serve a pretty, pretty broad range of people in Fairbanks. Is there any place we'd recognize your work? Um, yes. Uh, yes, in fact, um, my bank, uh, Denali State Bank, has, uh, has a number of our banner stands that are scattered around town. Um, there are a few other places too, yeah, yeah. What does it feel like to see one of your products? It's cool, floating it's cool. Around? Yeah, it's fun. it's fun when there's something that we've, that we've made that gets sent someplace, or that gets placed someplace prominent. But it's also really fun when we've done design work. We also do the design work. So when you say something, you see something that you know that, hey, yeah, we made that. Like from start to finish, we made that. Uh, that's really cool, you know. And, and also, it, it's, it's kind of fun when, we, uh, when we're on a mailing list personally, for some of the, the work that gets mailed in our shop. So you go home at night and you pull out something in the mail and you're like, oh, we did this, you know? <laughs> That's kind of a neat experience too, yeah. Great. Yeah. And you operate a website called This Tiny Empire. Yes, I Tell do. me about I that. Do. So This Tiny Empire is, is sort of a collision of a bunch of what I would like to call, what I call messy, messy interests. Um, I, I really like the idea of, of leaving something behind when I'm gone. Um, I'm in my late 30s, so maybe I'm having a midlife crisis. Maybe I'm, I'm recognizing my age. But, um, but I really, I think a lot about, will the world be any different after I'm gone? Will the people that I'm in community with, uh, will they have, will they recognize anything about uh, me in them after I'm gone? You know, that I will have had an influence over them. And so that, that's really important to me. And so this tiny empire is really built on this idea of building a life that matters, building a life where 
the work you do, the relationships you have, they are going to mean something even when you're not there anymore. And so I, I write about that. I have had the great fortune of doing a bunch of Skype interviews with some really cool people uh, about different specific areas of that. In fact, I, I did a, an interview with someone just the other day about rejection uh, and how we're all afraid of rejection. And sometimes that's worse than the actual rejection itself. And so that's coming up very soon. Um, and so it, yeah, it's, it's kind, of, kind of a personal project that um, that means a lot to me and that I hope will mean a lot to other people. I hope that it is, it is a way that my life will matter, some of the stuff that I write and the, the things that I present on the site. So what was it like taking all these interests and passions and formatting them in a way other people could learn? Yeah, it's, it, again, it's messy. So it really, what, what exists right now at this thistinyempire.com is it's the culmination of three or four years of screwing it up, you know, <laughs> of, of getting closer but not, not quite right. And so I, I, it really is a process of refinement. And in the past year, I feel like I've, I've hit my stride where I feel like the, the direction that I'm moving is really, there's a lot of, um, it's not dissonant anymore. It's very harmonic, you know, where um, everything is sort of moving in the same direction. And I feel like there's a lot of congruence there. Uh, and so, yeah, it's been a messy process, and sometimes it's, it's discouraging when, when you pursue something that doesn't quite work. But I feel like it's getting traction now, and that is very exciting. Yeah. So who should visit your website? People that care about other human people. Uh, that's, that's a good place to start. <laughs> uh, people who want to do great work, who want their work to matter. Um, sometimes that, that, that may seem like it, uh, it is for people who don't care about making a lot of money, but that's not it. I don't care if people make a lot of money. I wouldn't mind making a lot of money myself. Uh, that would be great. But it's for people who aren't in it for the money. That, that is a byproduct, perhaps, you know, and that, that is not the end goal. Um, I think that that is, um, that when, at, at the very end, uh, having a big pile of money but not having, having made a difference for people, that would really sting me. And so that is kind of where I speak from. Um, having a big pile of money and having helped people, well, that's great. I'm all for that. Uh, so I, I think it really boils down to people who, who care about the work they do, who care about making a difference, and want to have some lasting impact in their community. So what's available on the website? There are essays, uh, lots of essays. There are video interviews. And uh, shortly, I think there's going to, there's going to be some audio stuff. I, I've also included some, a few talks that I've given. So there's some, uh, some video. They're not excerpts. They're actually the full length uh, video of, of some talks I've given around Fairbanks um, that, that exist there as well. Yeah. And these talks, were they workshops? Uh, th these were, so one of them is a customer service talk that All I right. gave for a, uh, the Public Relations Society of America, the Fairbanks chapter. I gave it at a luncheon there. Uh, and customer service is very important at, at Dateline. We, we really have sort of built our business on customer service. And so that's a nice place for those things to nest. Like a lot of these ideas come together around customer service. And there's, there's a talk that I gave at my church actually about building a life that matters that is up there as well. That, uh, that sort of encompasses, it's you know, 25 minutes that really sort of gives the, the basic gist of what, what this tiny empire is about. Great. Yeah. So if people want more information about Thanks Fairbanks mm -hmm. or this tiny empire, yeah. where should they go? Okay. So uh, Thanks Fairbanks. Again, thanksfairbanks.com. That is a, is a great place to go. Uh, this tiny empire, uh, thistinyempire.com is the website address. And uh, you can get a hold of me on Twitter at, at Jeff Welch. And that's G-E-O-F-F, -F, uh, Welch, W-E-L-C-H. It's a little bit different, uh, so I, I have some singularity there, but it's also confusing. So, <laughs> so but yeah, no, I, I'd love to connect people that way. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today, Jeff. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching Fairbanks Focus Alaska View. To find more information, go to FairbanksFocus.com. Thanks for staying with us here at Fairbanks Focus Alaska View. I'm Annette Pearson, and this morning I am joined by Hannah Blankenship, the Acting Public Information Officer for the Northern Region of DOT. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning, Hannah. Thank you so much for having me. Um, well, we are really excited about some of the projects that have happened this last summer. I know 
I've recently moved out to Fox, so I got to see all kinds of fun construction this summer. Awesome. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about what DOT does and what its primary focus is. So our primary focus is to keep Alaska moving uh, through through uh, service and infrastructure. So we maintain Alaska's highways and about 250 airports around the state. We oh, also wow. have the Alaska Marine Highway System, which is, of course, in southeast. Um, and so we basically just try to... Uh, facilitate the movement of people and goods throughout the state of Alaska. Oh, cool. Yeah. I didn't realize that DOT was also the Marine Highway. Yeah, so so it's part of our, our state transportation system. Oh, well, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, and you guys have had a lot of stuff going on, so um, so tell us a little bit about what you guys have, have managed to accomplish this year. Yes, so we've been very busy in 2013. Um, we had a number of big projects that we uh, were able to finish, so that was great. Um, the first was Illinois Street, which is everyone's favorite. Um, it's about a 30-year-old project. Um, it's pretty impressive. We were looking at some of the planning documents earlier, and it really dates back to like the 1970s. I think oh, some wow. of the documents were even from the 60s, so it's been um, a long, long time in the making and so it's a great accomplishment for Alaska DOT to to have this project finished um, and closed out in 2013. So um, the corridor is a lot wider, um, it accommodates pedestrians and bicyclists a lot better um, and so it's really cool to, to see the whole project done. Well and it's just such a, a pretty a much prettier space now too. That straight shot down Barnett, the whole the whole section is uh, is really kind of come along great quite nicely. Yes, yes. We're really proud of it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great accomplishment and it's great to be able to check that off the list. Nice. So, yes. Well, where's some of the other stuff that, we, that I'm sure some people have seen around Fairbanks, but some <laughs> people who maybe don't get out of the house as much haven't seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we had a couple of big construction projects this year. One that I'm sure you saw if you lived out in, in, uh, in Fox was the Steese 5 to 11 resurfacing. Um, so we resurfaced about six and a half miles of the entire highway. Um, so it got new pavement, and that was just because uh, the, the uh, life of the pavement was coming to an end, and we needed to, to redo it. Um, so we got that done this summer, which was great. Um, I think we also uh, we repaid the pullout by the pipeline oh. on the sea, so that, that got a new surface, which was great. Um, and then we also started on Goldstream Road, which is, again, um, in your area. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Goldstream Road is a two-year project. Um, we're going to redo the entire road, which is ten and a half miles. So it's a it's a lengthy project, um, mm -hmm. and that one is really interesting because we were redoing not just the the top of the road, but um, all the way down to the subsurface. Um, and so as as many residents of Alaska and Goldstream know, that area is um, plagued with permafrost, right? Yeah. So it's pretty. It's not the best ground that you can build a road on. So is that what I was seeing with all the Tyvex and the bits of foam? Are they actually laying down like insulation before they're laying down the road? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, so basically, uh, they put down uh, foam along with other materials such as gravel and uh, before they you know build the road on top of it. And um, basically, that slows the thawing process for the permafrost underneath. So it really just, just traps the heat down there. And what that translates to for DOT is that it'll it'll be 10, 10 or so years before we have to go in and redo maintenance. Oh. So you'll see less of the, the frost heaving on Goldstream Road. See, so, I was really wondering about that. I had, because uh, I was watching the construction all summer long, and you know, you're, you're waiting for a little while in some of those spots. Yeah. Um, and I was like, is that, are they putting insulation <laughs> down? And, and my husband and I had a whole conversation about whether or not that was to do with the permafrost. Yeah, so yeah. I won. So <laughs> That's really interesting. Awesome. You'll have to collect on that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, that's pretty exciting stuff. Um, and, and so you guys do really a little bit of everything. Like I said, I didn't know that you guys had any part in the Marine Highway. What does DOT do with the Marine Highway? Uh, so we own and operate uh, the, the ferry system down there. Oh, okay. And that's actually part of Southeast region. So um, I'm in Northern region, so it's, it's not my area of expertise for sure, but um, <laughs> I know a little bit about it. So we have um, 11 ferries. Uh, that we operate and um, they you know they transport goods and uh, facilities and people uh, throughout southeast Alaska. Oh very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And um, so what else does DOT responsible for like as far as winter time type because I know you guys do all the construction in the summer it's you know oh it's construction season. <laughs> uh, so what do you guys do during the, during, during the winter? That was a great question. Um, so 
like you said, during the summertime, we, we focus primarily on um, building new infrastructure or improving that infrastructure. And in the winter, our focus kind of shifts over to maintaining that infrastructure. So we do a lot with keeping our roads and facilities um, clear of snow and ice and trying to make um, the movement of goods and, and um, people safer um, because, of course, we have some interesting conditions in Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so right now, um, as we're getting you know our first big snowfall in Fairbanks, we want to make sure that drivers kind of switch over to those winter driving habits. Um, and you know, it's it's always a shift every year, even if you've lived here your whole life. Um, you always kind of got to remember when we get that first snowfall to make sure that you're you're slowing down, especially at intersections um, when you're making those turns. <laughs> you're making a guilty face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> slow slow is important when it starts getting icy. Yes, definitely. Um, so slowing down is really the biggest thing that we want to remind drivers to do. Um, we also like to remind people, and this is one that I'm bad about, um, but to give yourself some extra travel time. Um, you know, even if your if your commute normally takes like 15 minutes, try to leave you know five or 10 minutes early. Um, just make sure you can get there on time and um, not feel like you have to rush. Um, because that's when we do see those crashes happen. So I can thank DOT for all those fantastic gravel trucks that are making my roads a little bit safer yes, too. Yes, absolutely. And what should people be prepared for like within their car in the winter time? That's another great question and something that we need to revisit um, every winter, even you know if you've lived in, lived in Alaska your whole life. Um, we want to remind folks to make sure that you have uh, half a tank of gas, um, at least in your car at all times. Um, make sure that you have things uh, such as jumper cables, um, sand, or cat litter um, to help you uh, with traction in case you do get, get stuck. Um, what did I say? Jumper cables, um, wool blankets are always good, um, snacks, uh, you know, energy bars, that kind of thing, um, scrape, scrapers uh, for your vehicle to get rid of snow and ice, um, and kind of just, you know, the every everyday common things that you might need. Um, I've also heard that it's a good idea to keep a jug of water and a candle. Is that, have you heard such I things? I haven't heard that one. I, I'm not sure about the jug of water because I feel like it would be a jug of ice. Right. Soon. <laughs> Which I've heard too. But I've heard something about like if the water isn't frozen, it takes that much longer for it to freeze. But again, I'm not sure about I'm not that sure one. not sure about that one. <laughs> <laughs> that may apply like Sorry. Minnesota, but not Alaska. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Well, what kind of things do you guys have planned for the future? Well, that's, that's a great question. We have a ton of things planned for next year. Um, so like I said, this year we started Goldstream Road. We got about halfway done on that project, and so that'll finish up uh, in 2014. We'll be doing the remainder of the road. I think um, they went from the Steese Highway side um, closer to like Belaine Road. And so this next summer will be the end that's um, close to Murphy Dome. Oh, okay. So people can expect some travel delays from about Belaine right on over to Murphy. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and then so that's where there's a lot of like, you know, it's the residential area. Um, so we'll absolutely be out communicating with folks ahead of time, letting them know what uh, what kind of traffic that they can expect and, and to, to make sure that they leave extra extra time in their commute. Well, that's good. And of course, those of you who live out there on that portion of Goldstream, I'm sure you're a little disgruntled, but you'll be much happier with all those much fewer ice heaves. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Because yeah, it means that we won't be uh, we won't be back in Goldstream for for a couple more years. Good deal. And yeah. what else should people out there know? Like, what would DOT want the people of Fairbanks to know uh, as it is getting colder? Uh, as it's getting colder for winter, um, just that you know we're, we're going to have a lot of snow equipment, snow removal equipment out, especially as we get more snow. Um, you know, throughout throughout the winter. And last year, unfortunately, we saw an increase in accidents where people would crash into the back of our snow mm -hmm. removal equipment. Um, so, you know, it was, it was really disheartening. Um, we had even uh, one fatality on the Parks Highway mm -hmm. um, and, and several accidents. Um, so we just want to remind people that when you do see that big cloud of, of uh, snow, um, as you're driving down the highway, um, just to, to approach with caution because you don't know there might be a piece of equipment in there. Um, and, you know, when you see a private vehicle crash into a grader or a snow plow, you know, those are often, um, they're not fender benders, you know, they're pretty serious accidents um, and, and people get hurt. Um, yeah. So we want to remind people to, to slow down, um, use caution and, um, you know, just use, use good Driving well, and give those plows plenty of room because they're making it better and safer for you to travel. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and even if you, you know, you get stuck behind one for 
a few minutes, um, please don't try to pass um, because that's when we do see those those kinds of crashes. Well, and so what are we expecting for, uh, I know you're talking a little bit about some of the Goldstream work. Is there anything else that DOT has planned for 2014? Yeah, we have actually, we have a lot on deck. So I'm sure <laughs> I'll be back talking to you again in the spring. Um, but we're going to see a lot of construction projects um, around the Fairbanks area in 2014. Um, so we're going to see Airport Way being resurfaced. Oh. Yeah, so that'll be um, from the Seas Highway to Pega Road. Oh. Um, but that will be all night work. Um, so uh, the traveling public, I'm sure, will be happy to hear that. Um, <laughs> the contractor will not be allowed to disturb anything um, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Oh. So it should be all night work. Well, that will make businesses a lot happier, too. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and as always, you know, DOT works really hard to um, communicate with our stakeholders, like the businesses along our routes, um, and as well as the traveling public. Um, so, And that's absolutely the, absolutely the case with Airport Way. Cool. And so yeah. Airport Way, we've got some work on Goldstream. Where else? Uh, Johansson is also going to be resurfaced, so the entire length of Johansson. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that will also be night work. <laughs> um, and so both of those projects are just uh, preventative maintenance projects. Uh, the pavement is coming to the end of its life, and we need to, to redo it. Um, we also ha will have a significant amount of work on the Parks Highway. Um, it's close to about $150 million. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so there will there will definitely be some work. Um, we're, we're not sure exactly what projects will go out right now, but we'll definitely keep updating the public. Um, as we know, closer to construction season, so March, April, we should have a more definitive answer. Um, but as, as always, um, we're here, available for the public. Um, I can absolutely take questions at any time about you know any construction projects or maintenance needs. Um, and I want to just give my, my email address and my phone number. Um, my email address is Hannah. H A N N A H dot blankenship, B L A N K E N S H I P at alaska.gov, and you can reach me at 907 451 5307. Awesome. So if the public has questions or comments, give you a call. Please. And are you guys taking public comment about any of these? these construction projects going on? Yeah, I believe most of them are, um, uh, uh, you know, finished with the design phase, um, but we can ab absolutely take comments on, um, you know, construction and, and how that will work with the, with the contractor. Well, awesome. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We, we really appreciate you talking to us today at Fairbanks Focus Alaska View. Um, and again, get out there. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's your city, Fairbanks, so if you uh, want to be involved and be active and hear about what's going on, uh, do give Hannah a call here at DOT. And if you're interested in hearing more about travel and want to know uh, what the latest and most recent information is about travel, uh, feel free to dial 511. Um, and you can get the, the, the most recent updates of different construction projects and different weather conditions going on around the state of Alaska. Um, thanks again for joining us. Thank and, you so much uh, for having me. Thanks. And thanks again, Fairbanks, for watching. Uh, again, I'm Matt Pearson, and this has been Fairbanks Focus, Alaska View.